All right, we're back. All right, so the epoxy has been drying here for over a day. The aluminum layer is firmly affixed to the wooden base now, and we have squeeze out everywhere. We don't have any more openings, and we are ready to clean this up. We'll hit this with some 100 grit paper and uh, eliminate all of the uh, squeeze out and the uh, nasty bits. And then we'll take the outer veneer and we will epoxy it here to the top of the aluminum. We'll do the same thing again. We'll put a nice thick layer of JB Weld all along the layer of aluminum and uh, we'll get the outer wooden veneer glued up and we'll get that into the, you know, I think we're going to use, for that we're going to use uh, the string method uh, because the clamps, I think the clamps may be too a little, a little bit too aggressive for the veneer. I don't want to put any marks in it. So, all right, up next, let me get this cleaned up and then we're going to string it up. All right, next up, we're going to glue the outer wooden veneer to the aluminum and wooden base. And we're going to be using regular JB Weld because we need a long work time. The, uh, the quick weld sets up too, well, well, too quickly, actually. It sets up in like five minutes, and it takes like five minutes to apply this layer of epoxy to the entire piece. And then we have to string it up to make sure that the veneer rests against the aluminum all the way around. to string this guy up. Let's see, which end are we going to start with? I think we'll start this end. There it is, and all this messy, nasty, gory detail. So we're going to let this sit for about 24 hours, and then we'll move on with the rest of the project. All right, we've got the uh, string off of our trim work, and it always looks worse before it's going to look better, so keep that in mind. We've got a lot of sanding to do and a lot of prep work. We had one war wound right here. Uh, we had a little chip fly out right there, and I've got that chip over there on the workbench. I'm going to get some quick weld and uh, put that back into place, and then once that's dry, we'll sand that down. We're going to have some scars here. We're going to have some, some cracking, and uh, we're going to fill this in with wood filler as best we can, get it sanded, get it polished, and get it filled and loaded up with um, polyurethane. And hopefully, uh, we can get this piece of trim work looking at nearly as good or maybe even better than the stuff we've already done on the car so far. All right, well, let me get back to work and let's see if we can't make this thing look a little bit nicer. All right, first pass with the 100 grit uh, sandpaper. We've got all the um, gory details taken care of. We've got a nice smooth finish here and we've got that little chip reinserted and sanded down. That's nice and smooth. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll break out the stain. Uh, I forget. I think it's the early American that I was using, or it might be the red mahogany. I can't recall which, but uh, we'll pick one. We'll clean the uh, dust out of these cracks as well and see if we need any wood filler. But uh, we're going to get a little finer sanding going on here. Get this stained and a little wood filler here and there. We'll get ready for some polyurethane. So, all right, next up. We're going to get a light sanding done, and probably the next thing you see will be the application of 
the stain to fix this chip right here. All right, so we'll see you shortly. All right, done sanding. Um, I finished off with a 220, and it's looking pretty good. In retrospect, I think I've changed my mind about the wood filler. I don't think we're going to need any. Because the worst thing we have is these cracks right here in the finish. You know, if you put wood filler in it, it's just going to make it look worse. So I'm just going to leave it alone. It's got plenty of epoxy under, underneath, and it's not going anywhere. It's smooth, man. It's really smooth. This turned out pretty nice. We're going to go for stain straight away and skip the, uh, the wood filler stage. So stand by, and let's go for that. All right, let's get some stain on this piece of wood trim here. We're just going to use a clean, dry cloth and see how well that works. Why? Because, well, I don't have any brushes and I don't feel like going to buy one. That's why. All right, here we go. Here we go. I must say that looking that's looking pretty nice already. I may wipe some of that off of there to lighten it up some. I don't know, what do you guys think? Now yeah, you can see the cracks, but I really don't care. Let's see if I can't darken up that spot a little bit. I'm going to let that stain sit on that spot for a little while, and then I'll wipe it. Well, let's see. I need to grab it by the screws on the back side. There we go. And we can get this little part on the, uh, get that little part on the end right there. And try to brush out any any lint left behind. We're going to put uh, two or three layers of polyurethane on this, and we'll sand in between each layer. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. We'll get a little, another little dab on this, on that light part right there. I'm not sure I'm going to put another coat of stain. This may be it. So we'll just see how it goes. Uh, but we will definitely be adding two or three layers of polyurethane and sanding between each one. All right, we're ready to go for our first coat of high gloss polyurethane. And again, we're going to use a clean, mostly lint free cloth. Let's see how this goes. Oh, we've got too many bubbles in it. We're going too fast. We've got to slow down. You go too fast and you use too much, you'll get a lot of bubbles. And that's a bad thing. Because if they don't pop, you've got to sand them out. And if you've got to sand them out, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. there's the first pass we've got some ripples and maybe a few pieces of lint in there here and there but uh, you can see the, uh, the ripples and so forth but uh, as the polyurethane begins to dry it will smooth out and then we will sand it with 220 in between coats 
it'll get a little better each time we do this. So we're going to let this dry for, oh, I don't know, a few hours, and then we'll hit it with some more sandpaper. All right, it's the next day, and I went and bought some hobby brushes to apply the remaining coats of polyurethane, and I broke down and bought a new can of uh, high gloss polyurethane here. So let's get started. This will be coat number two. Yeah, that's a lot easier with the hobby brush instead of using the uh, rag. So it was worth a trip to the store after all. Now you still want to go kind of slow though, because if you get bubbles in it, it's just going to make your life a lot harder. All right, coat number two applied. We have a few bubbles to contend with, but they'll most of them will pop out. And the ones that don't will get sanded out with a second sanding of 220 grit and then a final third coat of polyurethane. So, all right, so one more coat and then we'll be done and we're going to move on to the plastic flanges on the interior side of the door panel. All right, while our polyurethane is drying on the wood trim, this is what we have on the inside of the door panel here. We have one flange left out of one, two three, four, five. So at least we have one to go by. This is the plan so far. I have several sheets of this ABS plastic. It is one sixteenth inch thick. I thought about getting the one eighth, but I thought, well, maybe that might be too thick. I'm not sure. And this is, of course, this measurement is, who knows what this is. I'd have to put a a uh, micrometer on it to find out. So I'll probably end up cutting a little section here like this, or two of them, and I will double it up and I will glue them together with the ABS cement. And I will uh, test the thickness. This, this piece, you can't see it, but uh, this piece that I'm holding is slightly thinner than this. So if I make them a little wider, hey, they won't break, right? We'll cut two pieces sandwiched together, make them one eighth inch thick, I'll get the Dremel out and I will cut this straight across so we have a nice clean surface to adhere the uh, the new flange to. And we'll use the ABS cement to attach that. And then afterwards, we'll make new metal shims to reinforce it. And we'll JB weld everything together. And it should be really, really strong when we're done. Okay, well, let's get busy. Before we dive right in though i wanted to highlight what i see here and this is clearly the cause of this it's not that the person broke it because they were being too rough when they removed the door panel before clearly the design of the flange was flawed from the factory to begin with why well there's a gaping hole right in the middle uh so the metal uh flange from the chrome trim piece uh, slips into that little slot right there, and that's fine. Uh, but they could have made the uh, this 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 plastic flange a little beefier to accommodate the fact that it had a gaping hole in the middle of it. Not sure what we're going to do about that. I guess I'll have to recreate the hole. But um, that also means that my initial plan of putting a metal shim down the center uh, is no longer in play. What I'll probably do, if I had to take a stab at it, I'll make two shims, one on either side of that hole, so, so that we can accommodate uh, that, that flange for the trim piece. All right, so uh, let's start cutting out our new flange. We'll cut out a long strip here, and then we'll cut it into sections, and then we'll glue those together, and we'll go ahead and just make appropriate sized flanges. We'll make one, two, three, four, and then we'll trim each one of these on the door panel and then we'll cut them to size. I 
uh, I've got eight of these little chips. I think in order to glue these together, I will scuff up the smooth side. I'll scuff up the smooth side with uh, some sandpaper and then I'll ABS uh, cement them together. I don't want to glue this textured side because it it just it just may not stick. I don't I don't know. It, it may work fine, but I'm going to do the smooth side and use some sandpaper on it. I know that's counterproductive, but that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, uh, okay, so two, four, six, eight. So that's one, two, three, four. All right, so a little sandpaper for this now. So I probably should have ordered the one eight stuff, but you know, you live and you learn. Next time I recreate or remanufacture plastic flanges for a W126 door panel, I'll know better. We got this Odie uh, ABS cement. So this is basically for plumbing, you know, ABS plastic pipes. <laughs> that's number four let me get cleaned up here kind of nasty all right we're into the next day here so i've got one of these uh flanges that i made and i'm using a dremel tool and some tin snips to uh, shape this thing so i've got a little recess cut in it with the dremel tool to allow for uh, that little trim flange to uh, go through there and uh, i've been sort of just giving it a rough cut here uh, so that's kind of give you an idea of the process I'm using. Just doing it by eye, and I've got a measurement on this. This flange is basically three quarters of an inch tall, so that's uh, what we'll be going for on this one. So I'm going to continue to cut and shape this one, and when I get it to the right size, we're going to adhere it to the existing base with some ABS cement. All right, I'll show you more in just a minute. Okay, uh, I've got this one shaped pretty well. Uh, I think we're nearly there, we're almost ready to adhere it to the interior of the door panel. But the real test is, does it fit, right? So here's your channel where those flanges are inserted when you install the door panel. So if you take this guy and you slip it in here, you have a nice, it has a, a nice resistance level to it. So that... That's nice and firm. I feel really good about that. So this, the one eighth inch thick, uh, I'd probably order that as opposed to the sixteenth. Because anyway, so I had to, I had to double up, but I was being cautious. So, uh, but this turned out pretty well anyway. Let's finish trimming this little guy here and tack it on to the door panel. All right, it's kind of comical, really, about you know the old saying of. Practice makes perfect. Right, this is the second flange. Now, I made this one in half the time, <laughs> and it looks uh, twice as good as the first one. It looks store-bought, doesn't it? It looks pretty good. I'm getting the hang of it now. So uh, this guy will go right here, and uh, we'll go ahead and tack that on uh, just now. So what I'm doing here is I know that this is three-quarters of an inch from the top to the to the the back to the door panel. So I just cut a little piece of this plastic, and it's three-quarters of an inch uh, tall so I just place it there and and then place my the flange I'm making on top of it and then I just measure it and then I trim off what I don't need so that's the basic process there and I'm using for trimming I'm using my dependable old Dremel tool try finding one like this that's about 20 years old and let's see oh, look at that Ranson Wisconsin made in the USA. All right, try finding a Dremel tool made in the USA. Good luck. And I'm using a pair of uh, Wise or Wis. I don't know how you pronounce it, but they're good stuff. So these are my tin snips, and I'm cutting the pieces, um, trimming the pieces with these, and then doing the fine adjustments with the Dremel tool. All right, we've got all four flanges made and glued into place. There's the first one we did. 
it's not quite so pretty, but as we went along, we got a little better at it. This one on the end was a little more of a challenge. The uh, base was broken off all the way down to the level surface of the inside of the door panel. Uh, so we had to cut this one at sort of a, an odd angle, come across here, go up that way, and then cut back across. So now that I've got all of them in place, I can come back in here and start adding my steel shims. All right, skipping ahead a little bit here. Uh, so I've got some sheet metal that I harvested from an old 55-gallon uh, barrel. And I cut the width of it to slip inside these two plastic support flanges here that are stock. These came with the car. I didn't make those. Uh, so this piece of metal will slip inside those. We want the ability to pull this trim off later on in the future for some other person who owns the car. I know this sounds extreme, but hey, listen, if I JB weld this tip of this thing in here permanently, you won't ever be able to get this piece of trim off without cutting this. So I'm going to avoid that. You also have this, this, uh, you see this curved part right here? It's not a straight angle, it's a curved part, right? On either side of that hole. So we put a little curve in our, our metal shim. I'm going to call it a shim for lack of a better word. And we've cut an opening here with the uh, die grinder to accommodate the opening in the flange. I believe this will fit in here really, really nicely. It's kind of hard to film but that slips in there real nice. The sheet metal does not come all the way up to the top of the flange, um, but even if some of the sheet metal goes down inside the groove in the door, I, this, it won't matter, it'll just make it stronger. All right, so next up, uh, I've got to clean this up really well. Uh, I've got to sand the backside to make sure the JB Weld sticks to it. I'm going to scrape this off with some sandpaper and probably the Dremel tool, and then I will acetone it and to get any remaining grease off, I'll acetone this as well, and we will JB weld this little guy here in place. All right, that's what we got so far. We've got the first layer of JB weld between the metal and the door panels. So we'll let that sit for a moment, and then we're gonna go back in with another layer of JB weld on top of the metal, and we're gonna spread it around a good bit there on the uh, door panel to make a really wide layer of adhesion all the way around. Well, all right, folks, there you have it. We're gonna let this guy dry for a long time, and uh, we're gonna let this one dry up first, then we're gonna move on to the rest of them. Uh, we've got a small clamp, making sure that our flange adheres to our new plastic flange steadfastly, and uh, so I think that'll turn out pretty good. So we're gonna let this dry for Oh, I don't know, 12 hours or so. Then we'll take the clamp off and give it a strength test, which means we're going to yank on it and see if it breaks. So, all right, folks, that's all I've got time for. I tell you what, this video is running a little bit long. So I think we're going to cut this off and continue on with part three. In part three, we're going to finish all of the metal sh shims on, our, on their uh, remaining flanges. And I think maybe we'll dive into this uh, this board here, it looks, it's kind of nasty, actually. I wouldn't mind removing it and getting rid of this uh, foam that's behind it. It's dilapidated and it's just falling everywhere. But I wanted to get on the flange thing right away. I was just, that was, just, I was just dying to get into that. But uh, I'm going to pull that off and uh, remove that foam out of there. And, and just maybe I'll probably go, go by the hobby shop or something and, uh, pick up some replacement foam. Another thing we need to look at is the reproduction of one or more of these little plastic doohickeys here. I believe there's one missing right there that we've got to reproduce. We'll do it in a, a similar fashion as to uh, what we're doing here. Once we get this door panel all squared away and ready to go back on the car, we still have a couple of things to do on the inside of the door. And let's show you that real quick before we call it a night. So coming up in future parts in this uh, front passenger door series, uh, we have to get in here and take this check strap out. This It's just a little bit too stiff. I mean, if you you get in here and see, I'm, I'm pressing pretty doggone. Ugh. It's just stiff. It doesn't make any noise. It's just stiff. 
I think it just needs some grease in it. So I need to pull that guy out of there, clean it up real good and uh, re-lube it. And I think that'll be all for that. So another thing is this little typical little problem right here. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Maybe a little, maybe just worn out. Maybe add a little bushing or something. I've never done that before. Can't be too hard. How hard could it be? So that's all for now. Appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one, and remember, enjoy driving your classic Mercedes.